tell you how can you start your data management practice certainly not i don't know so much about artificial intelligence or data sciences what i can certainly do is i'll share one little i know uh, just to get you started uh, and i also share with you how artificial intelligence is being used in the industry that i work in uh, i work in the customer experience management industry and i can share with you how it's being used uh, in the industry today uh, so as we begin a uh, small story I, I i travel a lot out of choice and a few months back i found myself in greece and like most of the cities where you travel you do your own research you want to be an informed traveler uh, you go and try and find out the reason behind a parthenon being built a reason behind acropolis and and greek mythology is very interesting right and started reading a little bit about greek mythology and I was surprised that artificial intelligence had some reference in Greek mythology. We're talking about centuries ago. I don't even know the concept of centuries existed. I don't know if the Greek gods existed in the first place. But at that point in time, there was a Greek god, and I hope I can pronounce his name correctly, Hephaestus or something on those lines. So he's one of the sons of Zeus, right? And he was one of the few gods who got thrown out of Mount Olympus, and he found a way back. And he was a very successful blacksmith. and what was his speciality he could build automatons right automatons or robots these are these mechanical devices which could move by itself right and some of the mechanical devices that he built according to mythology is kind of funny right he built a big eagle which will go and stare against the gods which didn't see eye to eye with him right so there was reference of artificial intelligence maybe millions of years ago right uh, and then there comes aristotle right less less of myth more reality aristotle is probably considered as the father of logic and it's believed that the entire western civilizations concept of logic came from what over this man did a few centuries ago now there is in the history myth and there is fiction there is reality right now here's another example there was this arabic mechanical engineer called al jaziri right now al jaziri seems to have created some fantastic stuff he created this uh, some one of his inventions he created this toy which could serve tea or whatever they wanted to people it would move by itself and serve it right and then there was darwinsy's walking lion apparently it still exists somewhere a replica of it still exists somewhere and i did some googling and said that darwinsy is live again his walking lion is walking again right so it does exist somewhere in the world maybe a replica of it and then there was this interesting story of the turk and this is a very interesting story you know you if you get time you should probably research more on it i plan to read a book that's been written on this here's a mechanical chess player which could beat anybody in the world i'm talking about a few centuries apart they took this mechanical turk anywhere they went and this device would play chess with anybody and beat over and apparently when you set up the turk they would keep a coffin on top of it and for a long time they said the coffin had some mystical power to it and that's why the turk could know your mind it could read your mind and beat you at your game but then it involved a lot of mechanics right was it artificial intelligence was it mechanics nobody knows right i didn't have the time to read the book apparently the inventors found a very innovative way to cheat people right but then it was in some sense an artificial intelligence especially after ibm's jeopardy which beat uh, kasparov did he beat i don't know did it beat i don't know the 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 deep blue game that ibm built uh, the chess uh, thing after that invention came in a lot of people got in, uh, interested in uh, the turk all over again right and i'm sorry got interested in the turk all over again and two books were written which became best sellers so probably you should probably read a little more about the turk or the mechanical chess player and then there was this richards who created the first humanoid and the japanese guys didn't leave it behind japanese guys they had had their own mechanical devices which which probably had a brain of its own i don't know but which could be considered artificial intelligence and then there was this myth this is this fiction also at the same time there's this talking head apparently talking head would give directions to kings would give directions to the popes of the yester years on what decisions they should take right was it myth was it real i don't know and there was this good old frankenstein right you bring life out of a, a dead object was it artificial intelligence was it just a myth and there was this gallum gallums or go golems as they were called they were clay objects which could get life and become a robot by itself right so let's fast forward a few years how are we different from what happened 
in ancient Greek mythology or hundreds of centuries ago. And one thing you would notice, there's no reference of the uh, Indian civilization, right? There's probably no material available today, but some learned gentlemen would say that there was reference to artificial intelligence in the Indian mythology, right? Uh, uh, you know, there is talk that the ancient Greeks came out of India, right? There's so much of story happening around. Probably Indians also had some concept around Greek mythology. But what is it different? Why is the world talking about artificial intelligence today, right? The only difference is probably there's a lot of uh, progress made, especially because when you talk about figures like this, right? In the last year alone, technology companies, which could probably be the Facebooks and the Googles of the world, have invested $8.5 billion in acquiring technologies or acquiring companies around the artificial intelligence. Is that all, right? Is that all that is uh, solving the puzzle of why artificial intelligence has become so important today? It's also because of this gentleman, right? Most of you know him, Gordon Moore, who is one of the co-founders of Intel, said 50 years back that the computing power is going to double every year. And it's been doing that for the last five decades. For 50 years, it's been doing that. So one inference I made, or one inference that you're probably hearing a lot of uh, folks in the industry talking about is that the thought process has always been there with humanity. This concept of artificial intelligence is not new. The frameworks of neural networks or natural language processing is not new. We knew it many, many years ago. But we didn't have the computing power to use that to come up with any useful use cases. That is what is changing. The computing power that we have in our computers today or what we have in our pockets in our phone wasn't there even five, six years back in a large computer, right? The, the, the processing power has increased so much. There is access to more data today, right? Today, if I have to find out what you are doing, all I have to do is go probably, if you are socially active, go to your Twitter feed, go to your Facebook page, or go to your LinkedIn page. You have your entire history available, right? And then if, if I was a little more smarter guy, then I can probably decide what you're going to do for the next few years also. I can go and hack your phone, I can build a ransomware, and I can change the way your life is going to be. So the development in the social, mobile, analytics, and also cloud to some extent, has made computing power so cheap today that artificial intelligence has become real. At the raise of hands, how many of you use artificial intelligence today? Right? Absolutely, right? All of us use artificial intelligence today, right? If you own an iPhone, how many times you've tried having conversations with Siri, right? It is artificial intelligence, right? By the way, I saw this joke in Facebook today. Try asking Siri, uh, Kotana, right? Kotana, give me, give me tea. I don't know how true is it. You saw, saw this? It's something happening in Facebook. is an interesting thread going. Does Siri, I mean, I don't know if it's true or fiction, right? Siri gets jealous about Kotana, apparently. I don't know if it's, I haven't tried it in my phone, but you try talking about Kotana to Siri, Siri gets jealous. So every time you use Google Maps, every time you use Google search, you are using artificial intelligence. But is that all hunky-dory? Is that all, all only positives? Now, when somebody like Stephen Hawking talks about something, the world looks up to him, right? And this is what he said. If artificial intelligence is fully developed at the end of the human race, right? Stephen Hawking says it's got to be true. Elon Musk. Elon Musk says artificial intelligence is summoning the demon. But on the, on the side, he's also pledged $1 billion for an open AI foundation, right? So we all say things, right? And then Bill Gates says, we have to listen, right? He says, beware of AI. But why is this all happening, right? We, AI is not new. AI has been there for many years. Computing power has increased. All of us have become consumers of AI. But there's still a lot of fear around AI, right? I don't know AI, right? I'm not an engineer. I don't have a PhD. I don't understand how machine learning works. I don't know how natural language processing works. I don't know neural networks. But people like me probably still fear AI somewhere because we don't understand the technology very well. And there's something, nothing new about this, right? We've always feared that machines are going to take away human labor, right? It's, it's right from the days when steam engine was invented, right from the days when electricity was invented, right? Until these technologies become ubiquitous, right? Until we don't see that technology in front of our eyes, we will fear it, right? When electricity was invented, there was fear that electricity is going to burn down houses. There's fear that people are going to get electrocuted. Right? But today, we can't think of a day where we can't live out of electricity. Gone are the days when power cuts used to happen. Probably power cuts have reduced. And the invention of generators and batteries have made power cuts irrelevant in our lives. 
this is probably the fear we have in our minds today. Are we having a mighty power in our hands without knowing what is that we want to do, right? Do we know all the use cases of AI today? Do we know how to use AI very well today? Probably not. But this, this technology is going to evolve. It's going to have uh, a significant growth, probably in the lines of what uh, uh, Gordon Moore said. Probably his, technology, his, his theory is no longer relevant is what people say. People say computing power cannot double every year. The transformers or the transistors that the creators are already so small, you can't make it even more smaller. But there is this whole fear of quantum, quantum computing all coming in. So probably we'll find a way to do this. But when you think about AI, the first thing that comes to us is hasta la vista, baby, right? Mm -hmm. This is the first thing, this is our first introduction to artificial intelligence. Maybe uh, the millennials may not relate to it, but if you are a 70 or an early 80 born, if somebody told you artificial intelligence, you will say Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? And, and what happened in Terminator, right? None of this is really going to happen, right? This is like fearing that Mars is going to get overpopulated. There's this guy, Andrew Ng, who said this, right? Nobody knows we're going to find a way to Mars, but should we really worry about Mars is getting overpopulated, pollution in Mars, traffic jams in Mars? Does it mean that we have to start creating solutions about water management in Mars? Probably not. It's, 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 it's history uh, that tells us that we're scared of things. Galileo faced it, Newton faced it, all inventions faced it, and, and there is probably this trend happening very, very much around us today. Uh, if you've been reading papers in the last few months, uh, there are these software engineers, I'm part of the industry, software engineers who've created associations uh, which have said that robotics is taking away our jobs, right? Uh, there's talks at Wipro laying off, Infosys laying off, uh, because robots coming into it. Yes and no. The, the, the whole artificial intelligence is not going to take away jobs. It's going to reskill you, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's the same way how people feared when computers were brought into offices, right? Uh, my alma mater, IBM, was a pioneer in building it, right? When they started bringing these punching machines or the computers inside the office, there's always fear that you're going to lose jobs, right? Uh, my father went through that. He was in banking, right? He's still not comfortable with the computer, but when computers came to the bank for the first time, they all, they all rejected it. They all felt that accounting books or, or uh, experienced people writing accounting notes is the best way to keep track of your accounts. And even today, a lot of our older generation folks still believe in carrying a passbook. They don't believe in an e-statement or a mobile banking. They still want to carry their passbook. They still want to go to a state bank of India. They still want to get their cards punched, right? So the fears of robotic process automation, the fears of automa uh, automation or artificial intelligence are probably not real, right? Same thing happened to train. Can some of us think of a life without train journeys today? Some of us probably are affluent enough not to enter a train ever in our life. Some, yeah, some of the younger people have never entered the, uh, in a train. But then you can't think of life without train, right? But then when train came in, people said train could disintegrate people. People will not live in one community. They'll start moving from one community to another community and they'll destroy human. The same thing happened with lights. Apparently, when street lights were first introduced, it was felt that street light will destroy a concept of day and night, right? Human being was used to having darkness and periods of light. And when lights came in, they feared it. Right? So that brings us to what is this whole thing got to do with artificial intelligence? Right? Now, I'll, I'll try and relate to some of this as much as I can. Uh, again, I don't hold a PhD in artificial intelligence. Some of you probably will know more about artificial intelligence. My intent here is to say, how is this technology being used in certain industries? So the core of artificial intelligence is to make a machine emulate the intelligence of a human being. Can you make a machine take a look at a lot of data and make its own inferences without a human being going and telling what inference it should draw? Can, can you make a machine relate to data and take decisions on your behalf without you getting involved? Right? It's probably possible today with machine learning today. Right? There are various aspects of artificial intelligence. Probably machine learning is one aspect to it which which a relatively less technical guy like me is finding use in, right? Uh, let me give you an example. Now, uh, hold on a sec. I thought my phone rang. It didn't ring, right? How many times has it happened to you? You're sitting in a dinner table. Yeah, there's one gentleman there. You're sitting at a dinner table with your wife, and she's telling you something if you're married, or somebody else's wife. You're sitting at a table, and, and, and so she's telling you something very important, and suddenly you feel, you know, Check your phone is ringing or not. 
you didn't want to ignore her but you just felt that the phone rang but the phone didn't ring right you you're sitting in your meeting with a boss and you kept your phone there and suddenly you're taking your phone down and you thought the phone rang you thought the phone buzzed apparently 9 out of 10 of us go through this and if you didn't raise your hand you're lying you would have gone through it sometime right it's happened so many times that in the morning i wake up and i thought the phone alarm rang but the rang, alarm then rang it's it goes back to history pablo's experiments right uh, i'm sure all of you read about pablo's experiments with dogs uh, many years back in school it goes back to that it's called phantom vibration syndrome right your brain is so trained that you're used to doing something and you want to you want to uh, you know feel that it's happening right let's let's look at it inversely right how can you stop your phone from ringing when you're in an important meeting right yeah you can say you can put it on a silent mode but you didn't put it on silent mode right you're sitting in a very important board meeting and your phone rings right or your your i don't know if you guys have seen this ad I, i hated this ad and posted a sarcastic comment on linkedin there's this new crick buzz ad that's going around there's this guy who goes to a school interview right and uh, the absolutely the principal asks what do you want to become when you become big he says night watchman which parent in his senses would do it in a day when you go and stand in queues to get your admissions you wouldn't do it but assume it happens it's your phone which has made you do it how can you train your phone not to do it is it possible is it is it possible to make artificial intelligence so ubiquitous that the phone is inbuilt it knows that okay you're in your school you are you are in a principal's interview you're not supposed to open crick bus right how can you make your phone never ring if it's going to call from a other significant you're sitting with your wife right how can you make tinder application vanish especially you're sitting in your family and you don't want your wife to know that you use tinder right so it's for people who know what tinder is right i'll keep it out of the context so how do you do that right it, it all comes down to one single aspect to it i'm probably simplifying artificial intelligence yeah if you are somebody who's a computational expert you'll probably laugh at this right is artificial intelligence only about this word is artificial intelligence so much of technology so many terabytes of data is it all about this word probably not but as a layman as somebody uh, who gets to simplify technology and take it forward i'm a marketer i don't understand technology as much as i do so it's part of my job to make technology look simple right in my own words artificial intelligence comes down to one single word called context every conversation that we have every interaction that we have has a context right now if 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 probably after this conference if you're going to step outside we're going to talk over a cup of coffee we will have a context of a conversation it could be a poor joke that i tried to crack which i couldn't tickle your ribs or it could be some interesting aspect that i said you'd want to have a conversation on how do you get machines computers robots to get a context and that is where in my opinion today artificial intelligence is helping custom experience management right how many of you are familiar with custom experience management some of you custom experience management is basically uh, a way in which you can ensure you as a client experience my brand in the best possible way right today we live in a world that everything is so replicable right for all you know tomorrow morning you'll find the entire presentation i present is lifted up from somebody else's presentation you never know the world of google everything is so easily replicable right so is brand promises every deodorant ad you see today is a fake ad right yet again another ad the the wild stone ad which keeps going around again in cricket i don't know if you guys had a chance to see it uh, i hate a lot of these ads so keep referring to that there's this older gentleman probably the ceo of a company going to a party a bunch of guys standing there and he introduces his daughter and he looks at the guy and says you smell well which dad would do that i don't know only in film world right and then later next day morning he goes to his daughter's room and he hugs his daughter and he smells his daughter and says that guy's name kunal right come on you use your your deodorant's purpose in life is to objectify women into an object of sexual desire i don't know right but then it sells and you have a guy like Piyush Pandey was probably the most respected advertising guy going and saying that oh this ad is you're creating a new story about you know the importance of smelling good come on we all know why do we use perfumes you all want to smell good we don't want to stink especially in chennai right there's no differentiation between them but how do you differentiate your brand from something else you use a concept called customer experience management right why why do you feel an apple's 
device or an Apple's phone is, is better than a, I'm sure it's subjective. It's probably not better than Google, but being an Apple user, I'd say an Apple phone is always better than an iPhone, or, or a Google phone or a Samsung phone, right? Why do you think designers always stick to a Mac, huge Mac, which is costing 10 times the cost of a Windows book? It's, it's the experience of using a product, right? If tomorrow Apple's launching the, the car that they're talking about, there may be a bunch of people who will completely bypass what Elon Musk is doing and say, no, uh, these cars were invented by uh, you know, uh, uh, Apple or, or uh, the ghost of the, uh, the old guys from Apple came and created the new car. It all happens, but it all comes down to what is called an experience. Right? So I work in this industry called custom experience management. What we do, we help brands to ensure they connect with their customers in a way they want to do it. And in my industry, Artificial intelligence is probably being used in about five or six ways. Some of these are interconnected. These are not the only ways of doing it. But the way I understood, the way I think are easier ways to understand, these are five ways in which artificial intelligence is being used today. First is proactive service. Now, what's proactive service? Now, even before an incident happens, can I go and ensure that I take care of your customer service? right? How many times has it happened to you that you go to an app and you're ordering something, the order doesn't go through, right? And then you call, you take the pains of calling, you know, let's forget it, we have to call. Emails and Twitters alone don't work in many of the situations. Some places, yes, not all places. You call a customer line. It goes on to loops and loops and loops. The best case example is your Airtels of the world, right? Hopefully nobody from Airtel is here and they're not the sponsor in the event too, right? So best case example is Airtel. All it takes is a small thing to go wrong. And you will start hating Airtel. You will start cursing them right from you know, the fathers and mothers of who created Airtel in the world. right? So a small bad experience can make you hate Airtel, which is probably in a fantastic service all through the time that you've had. But how can you stop that from happening? right? Uh, how can you proactively call a guy and say, looks like you've had a problem. Is there a way you can solve it? Even before he realizes this. right? It's possible. I'll probably show you a video of some implementations we've done, uh, real life implementations uh, of how proactive service is helping banks. Second is customer journey analytics, right? Now, every time you interact with, with a brand, it's not one single interaction, right? If I'm speaking here, it's not because I woke up in the morning and decided to come, but there's been a journey. Rajesh and I know each other. Uh, I've had the privilege of being in the data sciences conclave in the past. So there is a journey and put it back into a purchase decision, right? No single decision happens just because he comes to your website and buys these. He's gone through, the buyer goes through a multiple journey, right? Uh, if you've, you are students of marketing or you've done some management courses, you'd have read this whole story of ADA models or, you know, somebody wakes up and creates a model names. You create awareness, you create desire, and then the sale happens, then you retain, right? How do you take a look at the entire journey of a customer before you take a particular decision? And then comes interactive analytics. In my opinion, Interactive analytics and conversational commerce are, are used interchangeably, right? Very, very similar. What, what does that mean? How can I use the interaction that I'm having with you to help me understand you better? How can I use that to serve you better? Classic cases, any chat platform, uh, Facebook chat or Twitter chat or, or, uh, or, or uh, uh, using WhatsApp. How can I use the interaction that I'm having with you, right? How can I use the interaction that I'm having with you to serve you better? Right? Some use cases of conversational commerce could also be Alexa. Right? Now, Apple's come out with his own home speakers, home bot, if I'm not mistaken. Right? You have a conversation with a speaker and say, hey, Alexa, I want you to buy milk. Hey, Alexa, I want you to do it. In some sense, conversational commerce. Right? And that doesn't run without artificial intelligence. And of course, there's the most hated topic in the Indian IT industry, or at least this part of the world, is robotic process automation. How can I do repeatable tasks without using a human being at a much cheaper way, in a much more efficient way, and probably the human being can get reskilled in something, but it might, in short term, lead to uh, replacing a human being in doing a repeated task. Right? So these are probably the five use cases. There's a lot of things inside it. You can talk about speech analytics. You can talk about text analytics. But in some sense, all of them fall into elements of this. Right? Now, uh, here's an example of. Yeah, another way of looking at it for some of you who've already got bored of my voice, let me let somebody else speak for me. 
In today's digital first market, artificial intelligence could be the key to unlocking the customers of tomorrow. Artificial intelligence is already around in the minds of customers. Many rely on it day in and day out. According to Gartner, about 38% of consumers have used virtual assistant services on their smartphones recently. With many enterprises adopting AI to deliver contextual, conversational, seamless, and personalized banking services, the time is now to be intuitive and proactive about how customers will experience it and bridge the gap between what technology can do and how people are consuming it. When artificial intelligence gets enriched with the power of big data and analytics, it can offer a unique and differentiated customer experience. Let's now take a look at how Serve Intuit, an omni-channel customer experience platform from Servian, can help you improve your customer experience. Mike is a customer of XYZ Bank. Mike is heading for a vacation next week. He's already made his travel arrangements. Mike needs some help. He reaches out to XYZ's bank customer service to see if they can help him. Hello, Mike. Welcome to XYZ Bank. My name is Emma, and I'll be your assistant today. How are you? I'm good, Emma. Thank you for asking. Give me a moment while I check your account details. Servant to it, powered by its AI engine, recognizes Mike based on his registered phone number and authenticates his identity using voice biometrics. It also instantaneously analyzes his recent transactions, demographic and behavioral data to mine his interaction intent. Servant to it notices that Mike recently booked return tickets to Venice and accommodation in Hotel Kelly. Using its robust Next Best Actions engine, Servant to it identifies that Mike usually buys his travel insurance through the bank, but this time he hasn't bought it yet. Mike, I see you've booked your travel to Venice, but haven't gotten your insurance yet. Are you calling me to inquire about your travel insurance? Yes, I would like to buy some travel insurance. Thank you. I've raised a request, and you should be receiving your travel insurance on your registered email address in the next 60 minutes. Servant to it connects with enterprise systems and creates a service request for a new travel insurance policy. Thank you, Emma. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, I'm good. Servant to its strong analytics engine analyzes Mike's account and identifies a cross-selling opportunity. Before making the offer, it also analyzes Mike's current option about XYZ Bank using sentiment analytics. Hey Mike, I noticed that you're traveling frequently. Can I offer you the right credit card which gives you a lot of benefits and options for frequent travelers? This offer is exclusive only to our priority banking customers. Would you like me to book you an appointment with Jackie, your personal banker, to help you understand the card benefits? Sure, but I'd like to know more about this offer before I decide. I'll send you the details on email. Can I set up a meeting for you with Jackie at 11 a.m. on 15th December at your Canal Street office? Okay. Servant to it connects with the CRM system in the back end and schedules the meeting for Jackie Abraham and Mike Matthews. It also sends out an email and SMS confirmation to both of them. Is there anything else I can help you with, Mike? No, thank you. Thank you for calling XYZ Bank. Have a good day. This is just one scenario. Servant to it can help enterprises to improve the efficiency of their contact centers, increase first contact resolution, customer satisfaction, and the overall customer experience while reducing customer effort, average handling time, and operational costs. For two decades, Servian has been at the new frontier. I'll save you from my marketing messages. So you can't. You would have guessed I'm an employed guy. I need to tell my company's name that I work for this guy. But then, besides that, this is a live technology. I, I, uh, I didn't have another option of showing you the dot my company's name. This is a demo uh, we've built for a company called ENBD. It's, uh, it's called Emirates National Bank in Dubai. And this is a live technology. All right? They do speech recognition. They do, do natural language processing. Uh, there is, again, another Chennai-based startup that has helped us build the solution. We are also fairly uh, deep in our engagement with ORM analytics in our uh, certain artificial intelligence uh, uh, research work that we do. So these are live examples. And the voice that you heard in a live scenario is given by our bot. In this, it is somebody in the US to make it look like an English or an American person speaking. But in real life, all this is possible. right? Even before an instance happens to you, even before you have a problem, how do you resolve it? Right? How, do you, how do you see, for example, let's look at uh, my, my favorite 
hating brand right now. I hate, I love to hate this brand called Uber, right? We always have so much problems with Uber, but does Uber do a proactive way of doing it? The most interesting way they'll irritate you is they'll give you a coupon which never works, right? Uh, I keep getting these messages saying that you get a 50% discount and all that interest will go and apply it and the bill will show 300 rupees. I say 300 is 150, I'll get a 150 discount. I'll take the trip and the end of it will get charged 300. And the coupon never gets applied, right? Thankfully, their customer service is okay when you write to them and say, what the hell happened, guys? I'm going to sue you or whatever. They'll reverse the money back. But a $70 billion brand, Uber is probably one of the highest valued American software company or a startup ever. How much does it take for them to do a proactive thing saying that, you know what, I realize there's a problem, right? If he does that, even if he charges me 300 rupees, I wouldn't mind. I feel important. So one of the most important use cases of artificial intelligence in this whole segment called customer experience management is proactive thing. Uh, it's easy done with a human being, right? But it's not. A country as populous as, it's not gonna be possible. Uber probably has three people sitting in some corner office in Roy Peta. He's not going to be able to call an irritated guy like me with a loud voice and calling him and screaming at him. But a computer probably is uh, in a better position to do it. So can you teach the computer context? Can it understand its natural language processing, right? Now, for, for technologically ignorant people like me who are also in the crowd, natural language processing is you speak your normal language. You don't have to do codes. It's like talking to Siri. Can you talk to an Eva? Eva is the intelligent voice assistant that Ian Beery uses in the Middle East. Can you talk to an Eva and tell what you really want and can the robot understand? It's possible today, right? It's probably not around everywhere, it is possible. The second thing is what we spoke about, right? Driving conversational commerce. Now, how, how is this possible? We, we spoke about it, right? You go through a whole cycle of buying anything, right? How do you augment a human's capability, right? How can you make, when you chat with something, the reply that you're getting is actually a human and it's not a, an artificial uh, robot that does it, right? How can you infuse intelligence into a bot that gives you intelligent answers, right? We have a chat engine in our website, right? And there are people who always come and test it, right? And uh, we realize most of our users are men, right? And uh, just to play around, I created a female identity, right? You can test it, right? If you go to serveyon.com today, you'll have a chat engine popping out. And uh, there's a nice English Anna name which pops up. There's a pretty looking babe who comes up. For the woman, I'm sorry. Pretty looking woman who comes up. And you chat with that, right? A lot of times people started chatting. There are multiple options there, right? It's slightly digressing from the topic. Nobody realizes Anna is me, right? It's me. When you go ping Anna today, I'll get a message in my, in my phone. I have to reply back, right? But then jokes aside, but how can you really train a good Anna to have a conversation like what I could have with a customer, right? But, but then we don't, we, it's possible today. It's probably not everywhere. There are chatbots available today. Uh, Siri is in a way a kind of a chatbot, but there are chatbot technologies which banks are using uh, in a lot of places. Uh, we are in conversation with a lot of uh, financial services, especially financial services customers who want to implement chatbot technology, right? Especially after this implementation that we had in BNBD, we've had a lot of people come and ask us, how do you implement this uh, for us as well? Then comes the robotic process automation. It's got nothing to do with robots, right? But then most of us tend to use a robot just to get people curious about it. They'll at least look at the slide. If I show, show a few flow charts and all, nobody's gonna be interested in it, right? What does robotic process automation do? It basically helps you create a smarter workforce, which doesn't probably have too many human beings in that, right? Can you take repeatable processes? Can you train the process to uh, evaluate it? A classic example of an implementation we had in uh, Hong Kong in a bank called Hong Leong Bank, right? Uh, one of the uh, technology providers who have a good solution is NICE. NICE and Blue Prism are two companies who've got uh, good robotic process automation solutions. We don't own the solution, we help them in implementing it. So we implemented a, a solution around loan processing, right? How do you really identify a guy who applies for a loan is eligible for it? Or can he, can he really uh, take the benefits of the loan or, or what discounts or offers can you give? Can you teach a machine to do it? Right? If you do it, you save a lot of time. Right? That's what a robot, in this, in this term, is a bunch of codes. Right? You bunch, write a bunch of codes to train the system to process it. Right? What sort of benefits do you get? People have seen up to 50% reduction in cost. They've seen faster processing of uh, documents of whatever the process they're trying to do. Things are more predictive. Right? You don't have a guy who probably get angry at his wife and 
you know, say that uh, your your claim is not processed, right? Uh, your employee satisfaction in some sense goes up. So that's all I wanted to speak to you about, right? Uh, artificial intelligence is real. It's it's probably going to be more ubiquitous as we go forward. It it probably sounds like an alien topic to a lot of us. Uh, we are we are experiencing artificial intelligence in our daily lives. Uh, and in one of the industries that I spoke about, which is customer experience management, uh, we are seeing live use cases. We are seeing a, seeing a lot of people talk about it at least today, right? The vendors, whether they have solutions or not, they want to go for the tag word, right? They want they want to ensure that the artificial intelligence five times in their website so that Google identifies it. At least that benefit it gives them, right? But then it is real. Uh, there is a lot of use cases of artificial intelligence. What I've covered is just a small portion of it, uh, just as a matter of telling who I am, what I do, I work for this company called Servion. We've been around for about 20 years. Uh, we, we run multiple platforms. Uh, for example, some of the platforms we are talking about here, we are deeply embedded with OM. We use a lot of intelligence from Rajesh and his team to build these uh, platforms. right? And some of the offerings that I mentioned to you, we offer these solutions. So what I told you is not stories uh, we cooked up out of Greek mythology, but real stories, the solutions that we do around the world bunch of customers that we work with, right? All these guys probably have not used artificial intelligence. I'll probably be lying. If you're a client, I'll say yes, but you're not a client, so you don't use artificial intelligence in all of them. But yes, uh, we do a bunch of the stuff. A lot of these guys today have technologies which is related to the space, right? Uh, I mentioned Nice. I mentioned uh, Blue Prism, which is not on this. Right? A lot of these guys, for example, Nuance, the other implementation I told you in Middle East was based on Nuance technology, right? They also have a good speech recognition uh, technology, right? Uh, uh, one one logo which is not there is, is my competition. Genesis does a good job about it also. Genesis is a bunch of good solutions in the market. There are there are so many of them in the market today, right? Customer journey analytics. I don't know if the logo is here on it. ClickFox, yeah, it's there. ClickFox is a company which is a pioneer in customer journey analytics. Is also another use case for uh, conversational commerce, right? So. That's about it. That's all I wanted to speak to you. I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you have any non-technical questions which doesn't involve answering technical answers, I'd love to answer it. Okay. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the conference. Radish, thank you for having me over. It's, it's a pleasure. It's lovely to see the conference grow so much. I still remember the IIT Madras session that we had about two or three years back and a smaller audience, but it's good to, good to see the conference growing well. Hope to be associated with you, and I'll reserve my seat for the next year also. Thank you. So Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.